In today's tute we're going to look at Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient which is represented by a little r. This is used to work out the strength of a relationship or the level of correlation, how much two things relate to each other. So in the last tute we looked at some graphs and described the strength visually in terms of whether it was strong, weak, moderate or perfect. And now I'm just going to run through how measuring the strength works when you're doing it more precisely using this R value, which is Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. Don't say that five times fast. So when we had a scatter plot where the dots fell in a perfect straight line, something like that, we said that was a perfect relationship. And then the next level of strength down from being a perfect relationship was for them to be pretty close to being in a perfect line, but just not quite. And that we called a really strong relationship. And then they got a little bit more higgledy-piggledy, they got a little bit more spread out, and we called this a moderate relationship. The strength was kind of moderate. And then they spread out even more and they looked even less like they were in a line, although they still did follow a linear sort of shape and you could see the relationship, it was just kind of all over the shop. That we called a fairly weak relationship. Now the R value is a way of describing that relationship with a number. We give it a statistical number, this Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient number, so that we can compare things rather than saying weak or strong, that's a bit vague. So a perfect relationship like this, where everything falls perfectly in a line, that's an R value of 1. When you have a strong relationship like this one here, where things are quite, um, they follow the trend really nicely, we would give that an R value of 0.75 to 1, somewhere between 0 0.75 and 1. So for example, 0.8, that's a really strong uh, relationship, or 0.9, something like that. Moving along, when you had a moderate relationship, that would be somewhere between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. The weak relationship down here is going to be between 0.25 and 0.5. So 1 is perfect, all in a line. 0.75 to 1 is very, very strong. 0.5 to 0.75, moderate, 0.25 to 0.5 is weak. And anything less than 0.25, there's not much of a relationship at all. You'd, you'd say almost no correlation. They hardly, they hardly relate. Now if you notice, all those relationships that I've drawn on the right there go in a positive direction. They go up the hill like that. So what happens when we're talking about a negative relationship? So for example, we have a perfect linear relationship, but they're going down the hill. They're going in a negative direction. And again, a strong relationship, but it's a bit more on the negative side. Or a moderate relationship, or a weak relationship, negative. Well, the nifty thing here is the R value is, just, is the same for the positives, it's just negative. So a perfect relationship that's a negative relationship has an R value of negative 1. A strong relationship in a negative direction would have an R value somewhere between negative 0.75 and negative 1. A moderate, moderately strong relationship in a negative direction would be, can you guess? from negative 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.75. And of course, a weak relationship that just happens to go in a negative direction would be somewhere between negative 0 0.25 and negative 0 0.5. So a negative R value doesn't mean that there's a poor association. Negative doesn't mean like, oh, bad, you know, like that. There's no association there because negative 1 is a great R value because it means it's a perfect relationship. So 1 and negative 1 for R values are both, you know, what you're aiming for. They both tell you that there's a perfect relationship there. It's just that one of us tells us we're going up the hill 
and one of us tells us we're going down the hill. So as independent values increase, the dependent values increase as well. Or as independent values increase, dependent values decrease. Both are a perfect correlation. It's just that we get to find out which direction we're going in. So as you can see, an R value is always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So an R value can't be, for example, negative 3, or it can't be positive 2.759. Your R value always has to fall somewhere within this range. If you get another number, you've done it wrong, basically. So if an R value has to be somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1, what does an R value of 0 look like? It's completely random. When your scatter plot has no association, it looks like the independent variable and the dependent variable don't relate to each other. They don't have a relationship. You can't see any correlation going on there. They're just not having a party. Then you have an R value of zero because there's no strength to it whatsoever. It's neither one direction or the other. It's not in any way strong. It's not even weak. It's just nothing. So R is zero. Now here's a couple of things to watch out for. Firstly, this works for linear relationships only. If you get a scatter plot that has dots looking something like this, pardon my terrible drawing, but say it has a roughly curvy sort of shape to it, then don't apply an R value. That's not going to work. Pearson designed it for these straight line graphs, either that way or that way. So linear relationships only. And the other thing to watch out for is outliers. Outliers, those hinky little buggers, will screw this up. If you have a scatter plot that looks like this, it's perfect, 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 except it's got a dot out here, then your R value might be something like 0.6, which really doesn't tell you that, hey, this whole thing is a perfect relationship, except for one little freak of the measurement out here. So outliers screw up this value. So you need to be really careful that you're definitely using a linear, you're definitely talking about a linear relationship and there are no outliers before you apply this. So what I would say is draw yourself a scatter plot first. If you've got an R value question, draw yourself a little scatter plot either on your calculator or quickly by hand and you can check a couple of things. Firstly, you can check if it has a linear relationship. Then you can check if there are any outliers. And then you've actually got a pretty good idea from your scatter plot of what your R value should be. For example, if I put this into my calculator and I got an R value of negative 0.5, for example, I go, well, hang on a second. I must have done something wrong, either when I plotted it or when I worked out what the R value was, because this should be a positive R value. So if I get a negative one, I know I've done something wrong. So draw yourself a little scatter plot first, and then you can check off these two things. And you can also give yourself a nice little guesstimation of what the R value should be, roughly. OK, so how do you work out the R value? There is a formula, and it looks like this. But here is the good news. In further maths, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to do this manually. You never have to work this out. You can always use your calculator. So finding the R value on your calculator is different depending on which one you have. Most of you will have a CAS, in which case you go to the Lists and Spreadsheet page, and then you press Menu, Statistics, Stat Calculations, and then 3 for Linear Regression, MX plus B. And then you put in your variables, and you hit Enter, OK. And you scroll down the little list of things it gives you. It will give you M, B, R squared, and R. And then you just read it off. So now to practice that, here are four scatter plots that I've just quickly drawn. And these each have an R value of one of the following four. So we've got negative 0.72, positive 0.97, negative 0.36, and positive 0.79. And so hit pause and see if you can work, work out which of these four corresponds to which of these R values. OK, let's start with this first one here. This looks like it's going in a positive linear direction up the hill that way. And it's fairly close to being in a straight line. This, these dots all fall really well on that line. So it's very, very strong. So the R value is going to be close to positive 1. So this one here looks good. So it's R of 0 0.97. 
What about this one here? This one's not got a very strong correlation. The relationship doesn't really fall that well in a line. It does kind of have this shape that goes down this way though. So if it was going to be linear, it'd be negative going down there. So the R value for this one is going to be negative and it's going to be closer to zero than negative one because it's not very strong. So it's likely to be this one, negative 0.36. What about this one over here? Again, we've got this sort of negative direction going down there, but this one's much closer to falling into a line than these ones were. So this has got a stronger relationship. It's going to be closer to negative 1. So that's this one here, negative 0.72. And finally, what about this one? This is going in a positive direction, so it's going to be a positive number but it's not as close to falling in a perfect line as these ones were. It's still pretty strong though, so it's probably going to be above 0.75. And what do you know, our last option is 0 0.79, positive. So same exercise again, new scatter plots. So here are four scatter plots and four R values. See if you can work out which graph corresponds to which R value. So this first one here, it's got a sort of going up the hill shape. It's got a generally positive sort of direction to it, but it's not that strong. It's not super weak, but I mean, you can see it follows that shape, but they're not really conforming to a line that well. So it's somewhere in the middle. And what do you know? We've got a 0 0.58 somewhere in the middle in a positive direction. This one here, also quite positive, but would you look at that? They really fall closely to that line. So they're conforming quite well to that relationship, that linear relationship, which means it's quite strong and it's positive. So that one's going to be R equals 0 0.84. This one here, is it going up the hill or is it going down the hill? Looks to me like it's going down like that. So it's going to be negative, and we do actually only have one negative in our possible answers. And if you look, it really does follow, oh, that needs to be negative, 0 0.47. It really does follow that kind of trend. It's, it's moderately strong. They're not all falling on that line really well. So it's only kind of eh, in the middle, 0.47, which is almost exactly between 0 and negative 1. So it is in the middle, as it turns out. This one over here. Is there any kind of relationship going on? It's really hard to tell. Those dots all look random. Is it going up the hill? Mm, maybe. Is it going down the hill? It's more likely to be going up than anything, but honestly, they look like they don't relate to one another. That looks very much like there isn't a relationship there. And our last option is R equals 0 0.17, meaning if there were to be a trend, it'd look, it'd be in this positive direction, but it's so slight you can hardly tell. There's basically no relationship between these two things.